We've got questions. We've got answers. We have the man to answer them. Jeffrey Levine from Buckingham Wealth Partners. Jeffrey, welcome back to another episode of Ask the Mallet Hammer. Sorry. That's all right. That's all right. I'll, I'll, I'll take either. You know, that's, that's good. All right. Well, this week, uh, our inbox is full, Bob. And Dave asks us a question, which essentially says, hey, my, my wife took Social Security, a smaller benefit at 62. I am looking to wait until I'm full retirement age to take my benefit and half of my benefit will be more than my spouse's retirement benefit. How does the cost of living adjustments, how do cost of living adjustments work for this so I can figure out approximately how much we'll get? Um, and of course, cost of living adjustments, Bob, are, are kind of top of mind for a lot of Social Security recipients these days, because for the first time in many years, they're actually seeing a, a quite meaningful increase in their benefit thanks to inflation. I don't know if you can really say thanks to inflation, but this is as close as we can get, right? So thanks to inflation, benefits are going up more than they have in quite a few years. And so questions about cost of living adjustments, we've been seeing an increase in those. In this particular situation, there is a lot going on. And it's important to understand that many individuals are what are called dually entitled. That means that you might be able to receive more than one type of social security benefit based on your circumstances. And here, that's what's going on with this individual's spouse. Dave's spouse, Dave's wife, is entitled to two benefits when he files for his own at full retirement age. Right now, she has claimed an early benefit on her own earnings history. Her benefit at full retirement age per Dave's email said it would have been about $1,000. She got only about $750 though because she claimed it early at 62. Now, by contrast, Dave's benefit is about $3,000. So half of Dave's benefit of 1,500 is still more than what his wife would be entitled to based on her own benefit. Cost of living adjustments, well, they work based on your primary insurance amount if you're earlier than that. So here, if Dave was entitled to $3,000 now, if we think that, and uh, Dave was going to, let's say, claim at, uh, Dave was going to claim early, if we think about his benefit as $3,000 today, well, because of cost of living adjustments, let's say there's a 5% cost of living adjustment, that means we might see another $150 on that amount. Now, ultimately, Dave's PIA, though, that primary insurance amount, is determined not by true cost of living adjustments, but based on wage adjustments, right? And, and so that is something that we also have to look at. And that doesn't necessarily follow the cost of living adjustment exactly. So it's not, it's not precise. We can't tell Dave precisely what this will be, but it will impact his PIA. And as his PIA grows, half of that is the maximum amount that his spouse could have been entitled to. The way this will ultimately work is Social Security will look and say, what should have been his wife's benefit had she claimed at her full retirement age? So about $1,000. And that will be kind of excluded from the spousal benefit conversation. The fact that Dave's benefit of $3,000, half of that $1,500 is still $500 more than what his wife would have received had she claimed at full retirement age. That means she can receive that as a spousal excess amount. There's a number of different sayings for it, but it's oftentimes a spousal, called a spousal excess or a spousal topper, some people call it. Uh, but it's essentially a bonus amount, if you, if you will, that that spouse will receive once Dave files for his own benefit, not until that point though. Right. So a couple follow-up questions, Jeffrey. Uh, one is when you look at your social security statement, the uh, monthly benefit amount that's on that statement is in today's dollars. And so if you did want to project forward using inflation or wages, you would um, multiply that amount by however many years by that wage rate increase or that inflation rate to get a ballpark, for instance. That's right. You could do that. Exactly. When you look at your statement, it's generally showing you what would you receive in today's dollars. Now, there are two different inflation adjustments that happen though, right? Because you've got a wage-based inflation adjustment that applies. But then after actually taking your benefits, those actual benefits are going to be increased by the cost of living adjustment that applies 
for, for all social security recipients. So there, there's multiple ways in which inflation in different ways, right? There's the spending, what is your cost of living adjustments, your CPI, and you're also your wage based. How much have wages increased over the years? Those are two different inflation numbers and both can impact your social security benefits, but in different ways. Right. And, and the other important point I think to mention is that Dave's wife will get the highest spousal benefit at his FRA, but she won't get delayed retirement credits if he was to wait until age 70, though she would get the higher survivor's benefit if he did wait to 70. That's right. So, the, you know, the, the thing that makes Social Security so complicated, Bob, is that the rules are so similar to one another, but not the same. And I, I always say, like, when we're talking about, you know, if I showed two pieces of paper here, one black and one white, and I said, which one is white? I would say super easy, right? Like very simple to say which one is white, which one is the lighter color. But if I gave you 17 different shades of gray and said, pick the lightest one, it becomes a lot more complicated. When things are similar to one another, it becomes harder to, to separate them, to distinguish them. And this is a great example of that. So an individual's own retirement benefit does accrue delayed benefits or delayed credits after full retirement age, but not a spousal benefit. So while there would be a benefit, let's say, for Dave waiting on his own, which, of course, if Dave passes away first, would then go to his wife as a survivor benefit, as you mentioned, it would not increase his wife's spousal benefit. And by waiting until 70, that's four more years that his spouse would not have a higher benefit for herself because Dave was waiting to take his own benefit and she can't get a spousal benefit until he takes his own. It's just this constant like play off of one another where it's not just an individual decision that's made in isolation. You have to look at how your decision as an earner might impact other individuals' benefits as well. That said, ultimately for married couples where at least one individual is healthy, the higher earner should often consider waiting and getting that higher benefit because of the survivor factor, right? Because that benefit lives on with the longer of the two lifetimes. Yeah, well, you certainly answered that reader's question and all my follow-ups, much appreciated. Well, we could spend another, I don't know, five hours, Bob, talking days, just about social months. security. <laughs> and I mean, there are so many new, there's, there's literally thousands of social security rules out there, thousands of social security rules to parse through. So if you've got a question about one of those or anything else for that matter, uh, give Bob and I a shout. Email us here at askthehammer at buckinghamgroup.com. Again, that's askthehammer at buckinghamgroup.com. And Bob and I look forward to tackling your question real soon. Mm -hmm.